I ask you to set a 100-day plan. Keep my life clean and keep my eyes open. You don't let sin or guilt or regret pile up like garbage in your life because you keep short accounts of God through confessing to Him and, and through receiving forgiveness. Protect your peace. We should get up each morning believing for a good day, expecting favor, knowing that God is directing our steps. At the same time, we should realize everything may not go perfect. Choose life that you and your descendants may live, making a point out of the fact that every decision we make not only affects us, but it affects the other people around us and even generations to come. Let's be honest. And I know there's like five prayer warriors in this room, but for the other thousands of us, we passively pray. Okay, I'm gonna say it stronger because y'all are real fake right now. We worry out loud and call it prayer. We are in spiritual warfare. And that this spiritual warfare, it always begins in our mind. There is a battle going on for your thoughts. There is a battle going on for your thinking. And the enemy, the way that he tends to attack us is he comes and he lies and he puts little lies in our minds. Here's an opportunity right here in front of me. Things are going well. Things are beautiful. They like me. They like me. And then something in your mind and in your spirit says, let me try and figure out a way to f this up. Before you label yourself as someone who has social anxiety, have you ever considered maybe you're just bad at small talk and you hate being fake at big gatherings? Is it possible? This place where we are right now, what we're experiencing, this is not normal. This is different. My business partner trying to discourage me. Oh, don't, don't go on now. You were on last week. Most of the problems that beset us are very, very complex and they need to be decomposed in a sophisticated way into their constituent elements until they're differentiated enough so that partial solutions for some of the problem can arise as a consequence of practical endeavors. One thing to think that it's impossible, but when you start telling people it's impossible, it takes on a whole new meaning. You may think, I'll never break this illness. I'll never get well. I'll never meet the right person. Those thoughts come to all of us. You can't stop that. My challenge is don't give them life by speaking them out. I'm going to stay right on this because I know when God is speaking and he's speaking to somebody, it's a cloud the size of a man's hand. Yet, when planted, it grows. It's a little boy's lunch. It's only five loaves and two fish. Jesus said, put it in my hands because yet, when planted, it grows. Everything you're going through is preparing you for what you ask God for. You just got to quit tripping while you're in the process because the process is necessary. You may not see it now, but when he gets you on the other side of it, you're going to see exactly why it went that way. And you're going to be okay with it. And I'm sure a lot of you right now, you're looking for something to help you with your problems. And the Word of God actually is so powerful and so strong that it, it ministers faith to you and it helps you believe that God is going to take care of you. You're going to feel so much better. Why? Just because you heard the Word of God. We were training bigger, stronger, faster quitters. We weren't diving into the sewer. Everybody's got a story. We don't share it on social media. We share our nice life on social media. We, have, we all have a dungeon. I'm just willing to talk about mine. Most of us aren't willing to talk about it. I want to talk about my dungeon. I wasn't building that so-called mental toughness. The dream will destroy you, right? Let it. The first version of Eric Thomas would never be able to stand in front of you guys. The first version of Eric Thomas, the high school dropout, that guy would have never been able to stand here and help you. I had to destroy that Eric Thomas. That Eric Thomas that grew up in Detroit and had like that Detroit mentality, while I love it, it doesn't transfer to every community. And my gift has developed and it developed and has taken me many places. 
You have something that you brought to the universe. And that if you decide that my life deserves my developing, this what I do well. And becoming the best at it and mastering myself and seeing what I have within me. There's a couple different types of stress. Now, if it's something that you can control that's causing you stress, well, why aren't you getting control of it? Now, there's also stress that's caused by things that you cannot control. So if you can't control something and you can't get control of it, you have to at least embrace what you can. You know, there's that old idea that God has a book, you know, and keeps track of everything in heaven. It's like, okay, okay, you know, maybe it's not a book. Fine. But that is a really useful thing to think about because, well, maybe you disagree. Maybe you think people get away with things all the time. I tell you, I've never seen it. What I see instead is that thing happens, right? They, someone twists the fabric of reality and they get walloped and they think, oh my God, that's so unfair. A person who has purpose in their life, they have something to go for, some meaning. One writer described it, for some people it becomes a magnificent obsession. And for you and I, maybe it doesn't need to be that dramatic as a magnificent obsession. But it has to be something that does something to us, something that pulls us, especially into the future. You might get the vision from a role model, you might get the vision just from coming up with a new idea. But in order to figure out how to go from where you are to where you want to be, to close the gap from where you are to where you want to be, it's best to learn by other people's experience whenever you can. So get a role model, get their strategy, and go to work. Get into action. And this is not just being positive, this is your faith being released. Proverbs 4 says, be careful what you think because your thoughts run your life. Are your thoughts helping you or hurting you? Are you thinking power thoughts, victory thoughts, well-able thoughts? Or are you thinking defeated thoughts? I got that beneath the surface thing. I got that Saturday thing. Waiting on something to come up out of a tomb and resurrect for the healing and salvation of the world. So he, he narrated his situation with his faith. And so he became the father of many nations, and we are his seed. Failure means you've now learned another valuable lesson that pushes you one step closer to success. I'm willing to bet that I have failed more times than anyone in this room, because I have attempted so many things that you have no idea what I've attempted and failed at. But I don't let the failures define. It's God pointing you in another direction. Receive God's mercy. Don't stay mad at yourself. Whatever you did wrong, God knew you were going to do it before you did it. You're no surprise to God. He's not shocked about what you do. Ask for forgiveness, receive mercy, and go on. You cannot have a good day if you're under condemnation. It's not possible. That should be something that you do every morning. We're talking about how to get your day started right. I had to use all this negative sh that was making me weak and horrible as a person. I had to use this as... The power that now fueled me, I had to flip it on his head and say, hold up, this might be exactly what I need. The darkness is exactly what I need. It's how you look at your situation. And I was looking at it all up. And when you get to the point where all you want to do is be successful, as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. And I'm here to tell you, number one, that most of you say you want to be successful, but you don't want it bad. You just kind of want it. You don't want it better than you want to party. You don't want it as much as you want to be cool. You, most of you don't want success as much as you want to sleep. Embrace whatever comes to you. Don't run from it. Step toward it. Don't try and duck it like most people do. See, most people want it easy. See, if you easy come, easy what? Easy go. See, but when you go at what you're going to deal with and you deal with the difficulties of it, but they don't know where to start. They don't know where to start it. You know, they don't know where to start. And so they say, hey, wh where do I start? And, and when's the best time to start? And I have a very simple answer for that. Here and now. That's it. You, you want to improve? Where do you start? You start right here. And when do you start? You start right now. You initiate the action aggressively. 
Other things you're going to be doubtful about, you're not going to know. What the hell does that mean? It means that you're not going to suffer. It means a beautiful state is that you're going to be happy, but that's only one. Or you're going to feel creative, or you're going to be passionate, or you're going to be in awe of something. In the tough times, you have to especially be on guard. It's very tempting to vent your frustration, tell people how the loan didn't go through, how bad the medical report was, and how these people just didn't treat you right. But continually talking about the problem, that's not only going to make you more discouraged, but you're giving that problem more life. Turn it around. Don't talk about the problem. Talk about the promise. God said it's time for you to start planting seeds of purpose. Even in the soil of doubt, if you plant it, it'll grow. If you plant it, the cloud will burst. If you plant it, the rain will fall. If you get your hands dirty and have faith and hope against hope, yet when planted, it grows. Pull yourself together and quit tripping because you're in the process. God is processing you. He ain't through with you. If he was through with you, you would not wake up in the morning. He gonna fix it. Everything is wrong. First of all, let me tell you this right here. Why are you tripping? Look, we've got some very difficult situations going on in our life. And probably if all they looked at was our situation, they would have just been ready to throw in the towel and forgive up and give up. But I know what Paul was doing. He was remembering the other times in his life when he had seen God deliver him. And we all look for that cookie that your mom used to give you right. when you were sad, yeah. when you were sick. We look for our wife or our husband. We look for comfort. It's in those moments you must retrain your mind to think differently in health. I wasn't training them to do that. Fast. You can fast for 30 days. I never said when you want to succeed as bad as you want water, because you can go about three days or so without it. I said when you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, you probably only got a minute or so. Then you'll be successful. All of us need some area of our lives where we can have a feeling of competence. That people know when they think about this area, that's something you do. That you eat and sleep that. And that you do that. You do that. And people know it. And you know it. And you know that you know that you know this. If you don't know anything else, you know this. Take the step. Step aggressively towards your fear. And then... That step towards your fear is the step into bravery. Because we, we're, we're scared of what we don't know. And there is only one way to learn and to know, and that is to confront that fear. And, and that is the beginning of wisdom. And it's something that deeply terrifies me. And, you know, ever, ever since last September, when I came to more like broader public attention, one of the things, I've been terrified of making a mistake because I certainly know I'm more than capable of making a mistake. And thank God, so far, either I haven't made one or no one's found out about it. And here's the other great advantage if you have purpose for the future. It pulls you through all kinds of challenges and all kinds of difficulties. If you don't have these strong purposes for the future, it's easy to get swallowed by a bad day. It's easy to be almost annihilated by a poor month. And it's easy sometimes to almost disappear beneath the waves of a, a year that goes backwards if you don't have something to pull you beyond that year. So jot down what a breakthrough is and let me give you the three steps of it. A breakthrough is a moment in time. That's what it is. It's a moment in time. It's a moment where suddenly what was impossible becomes possible. And what makes it possible is you take immediate massive what? Immediate massive what? Action. For that to happen, for the impossible to become possible. You remember what you are capable of if you mobilize your will. And if you keep moving forward, you keep advancing. Remember what you are capable of if you keep attacking. And don't stop. 
and don't stop attacking and don't succumb to the suffering and the pain and the fear. Don't succumb, but instead move forward and attack. Don't litigate over how much you have a right to have what I got because until you suffered what I suffered, floated through what I floated through, survived what I survived, what you see on the outside is the reflection of the conflict on the inside. And I could go home now, going through your life, saying, what do you see? Going through the trunk of your car, through your garage, through your house, what you see on the outside is the reflection of what's going on on the inside. Remember, be a student, not a follower. And here's what you must always do. Design your own personal life. I'm very happy for people to take notes in my seminar, but I'm also just as happy if somebody says, hey, this is not for me, tear up all these notes and throw them away. That, that's just as valid for me. Remember, be no one's disciple. Chart your own course. Make what you do the product of your own conclusion. What I'm saying here is be your own person. You don't have to be a model of someone else. You don't have to do it like anybody else, right? Do it like yourself. Buy what you want to buy. Listen to what you want to listen to. Make changes if you want to make changes and don't make changes, right? It's your life, I'm telling you. And don't let anybody persuade you any different. Success is not a stereotype. When you continue to speak negative things about people that have done negative things to you. You are also continuing the cycle of negativity. You are speaking negative things into their life. Therefore, you are inspiring the negativity to continue. If you speak positive things into people that have done wrong by you, especially if they're continuing to do negative things to you and on your behalf, you are therefore trying to speak a positive transition from them being a negative and horrible person. You are trying your best to speak positivity into their life so that they can now start becoming a better person and a more positive person. It goes back to the saying, pray for your enemies. Most people in a fearful situation, they forget everything and run, but there are few that in a fearful situation, they face everything and rise with courage. And that's who you are. And when you're going outside of your comfort zone, it takes courage. Most people, the majority of people die within their comfort zone. They're not risk takers. They go through life trying to play it safe. There's no safe position in life. There's no safe position in life. You can't get out of life alive. You got to die to leave here. And so this is the time. Be very careful who you judge at their low moment. You might be judging somebody right now for the battle that you're about to fight next month. Be very careful how you judge people. Be very careful how you say, oh, well, I just don't understand people who are depressed. After all, there's so much to be grateful about and rejoice in the Lord always. And yes, yeah, cool that you've got a Pinterest kind of faith right now, but something might happen in your life that knocks you off balance to the point that your stable self becomes a little bit wobbly for a little while. And you're going to want to make sure that you haven't judged people for things that you don't currently struggle with because it might happen in your house. Amen. It creates conflict because it does not crown when you have been placed in the position, it crowns before. You're rich before you got the money. You're educated before you got the degree. You're a preacher before they ordain you. You're a husband before you find the woman. If you're not that before, you won't be after. 
So you have to go through a period of displacement where you have vision to function on a level and don't have opportunity, which creates frustration. Because you say, I feel this with everything I got inside of me, but nothing outside has acknowledged me on the level that I think on. And you don't feel appreciated because your thoughts are up here and your situation. Woo! Do you hear what I'm saying to you? Success is the continual unfolding of the design of your own life and pulling it off. That's what success is. The continual unfolding of the design of your own personal life and pulling it off in whatever degree you wish, that is success. Successful in doing whatever you want to do that makes sense to you, for you, your family, your responsibilities, or take on responsibilities or refuse responsibilities. That's strictly all up to you. We've been given the power of choice. Every life form except human beings operates by instinct in the genetic code. We never have enough information to judge anyone. I want you to remember that. We know what we know, and there's a lot more that we don't know than that we know, usually about every individual. It's interesting to me that nobody ever judges me or nobody ever judges you if they have what you have. People only judge us when they don't have what we have. And so therefore, it's not even really, really what the word true judgment is all about. It's just jealousy. And they're not even mad because you have it. They're mad because they don't have it. It has no multiple choice. Only humans have multiple choice. In the winter, the goose flies south. Why? Because he's a goose. No one epitome of success is giving a design to your life and go pull it off making progress in that direction that satisfies you if it doesn't satisfy you make alternatives and you change and if you get some better ideas sure you may follow someone's suggestion and ideas but not orders design your own life like you want it that will fit now if you take on some responsibilities now you got to consider those yes you can ignore your responsibilities but you won't feel good about that Guess what the old prophet said? Some things that taste good now in the mouth turns bitter later in the belly. So you don't want to sacrifice. We all must suffer one of two pains. Regardless of your choice of lifestyle and what you want to do, we must all suffer one of two pains. The pain of discipline or the pain of regret. I don't care what you think of me. Your opinion of me does not matter at all. Well, you gotta know your heart pretty good to be able to say that. Be careful what you speak ex-boyfriends, ex-girlfriends, ex-wives, ex-friends. They are speaking negatively about you, but don't join in. Protect yourself. Cover your tracks. But be careful what you speak, because you are empowering negative behavior. I believe that some of the worst pain that we experience in life comes from people falsely accusing us and judging us. When they don't know us or they don't know anything about us and they don't bother to find out they just take a look and have an opinion how many of you have ever been hurt deeply by someone who judged you and criticized you and you just thought you don't even know what you're talking about well one of the best ways to keep those kind of things from happening to us is not to dish it out to other people who are you to judge God has a job to do let him judge who are you to judge you are being judged for judging. We all have to speak upon negative things and negative people, but try your best to pray for your enemies. Try your best to speak positivity and hope and saying, you know what, I don't like what you're saying and I don't like what you're doing, but I'm gonna continue to pray for you. I'm gonna continue to hope and speak blessings and opportunities in your life because maybe you're bored. That's why you continue to just sit around and do and speak negative things. They say is power in the tongue. So if you have power in the tongue, if you continue to speak negative things about people that are doing negative things to you, you are empowering their negative behavior. You'll notice that that negative behavior won't go away. If you speak it, someone will be it. So who 
who are we to judge? We shouldn't judge people. We should help them. And there's probably nothing more we can do to live a worthwhile life than to help people. To help other people. And in helping other people, I promise you will be rewarded and you will be helping yourself too. We see men tested beyond anything we can imagine. And still they overcome. Overcome the pain and the suffering and the fear. And yet we can't get ourselves out of bed in the morning. We can't move toward a goal we've set for ourselves. We won't allow that. And what we suggest to everybody is to consider the disciplines because disciplines weigh ounces, regrets weigh tons. You don't want to substitute a, a discipline for a regret. In our opinion, that would be a poor choice. Now you could do it. But some things are poor trade-offs. The old prophet said, what if you gain the whole world, but it cost you your soul? Would that be worth it? With a bit of intelligence, we say, no, that doesn't seem worth it. Even if you got the whole world, if you traded your soul, that experience would be so bitter and so awful and so devastating, it wouldn't be worth it. What if you got some gain by greed instead of legitimate ambition? I'm telling you, it might taste good up front, but it's going to turn bitter in the belly. And a bit of that advice saves some people from devastation. Say, well, you're right. I better think twice about that. So we must confront all laws, spiritual laws, agricultural laws, basic laws, fundamental laws. We must confront all of those. But you still now can design your own life. A little, a lot, go east, north, south. Don't put yourself in the straitjacket of something that's not to your choosing and not to your liking. Now, if you really want the prize, you know, to you know, become a multi-millionaire and run a company, fine. Then you got to pay the price. But hey, it, it's, it's strictly up to you. There's no requirements here. Where is it written? There is no law. The key is to try to design your life. Yes, you might try something and say, this, this cost me too much. This I'm, I'm away from it. My family, I'm gone. So, this is valid. Little girl said to her, Mommy, he said, Daddy never plays with me. He comes home and he's got this briefcase and he disappears and works on his papers and tells me to go to bed. And she tried to explain, said, Look, your father loves you very much, but he's so busy at work. He can't get everything done. He has to bring it home. She said, Why don't they just put him in a slower group? If you haven't got time for your kids, you should consider a slower group. It's not the money. It's not the success. You've got to make sure everything works. Not something at the expense of everything. And this something at the expense of everything uh, turns out to be too costly. Life in its best and most fulfilled, I think, is a balancing act to make everything work. A mother's got the challenge. A father's got the challenge. And all of this imbalances, you know? Even the tug of war and, and trying to make it work as husband and wife with, you know, a little different concepts. Guy's a baseball player and he gets four or five million dollars a year and his talent takes him right. 185 games, whatever the games are that they play. That's a pretty tough one to do, gone most of the time. Should he go where his talent leads or should he, should he work at the bank from nine to five? It's a challenge to try to fit, compromise, make it work, make all systems work so you don't sacrifice everything for something. And it's all a dilemma. She says, go conquer the world and be home by five o'clock. And he says, well, that's a real challenge, right? But if you've got partners now, it's, it's this combination of working it out. But let me tell you what, it can be worked out. Here's what happens if you ignore it. It just gets worse. You just got to confront and say, let us work it out so that we bless our life with all of the systems that furnish us with a good life. And guess what? It never ends, this trying to balance your life with everything. Getting in charge, mastering the situation, this is the big challenge. I remember some companies I started years ago. I'd start the company, I'm running the company. First thing you know, the company's running me. And along about that second year, I say, hold it, hold it. I used to be in charge. <laughs> and now I'm out of control. I used to have it on the run. Now it's got me on the run. 
And the same is true whether it's a company or an enterprise or whether it's it's the day. The key is you just got to take charge and say, I'm going to start getting a handle and taking charge of my day and not let it get out of control. Because it's so easy to be persuaded and distracted by, you know, things that use up time, take up time. And then first thing you know, it's it's all out of control. Here's the key we've all learned. Maybe we just need to be reminded. It's not the hours you put in. It's what you put in the hours that get. Guy comes home at night, exhausted, falls into the chair and stops and going, going, going. Here's the key. Doing what? Here's what we learned. Don't mistake movement for achievement. Busy, busy, busy. That may not be the deal. It is the doing what that's the deal. Some people are busy all day long doing figure eights. I mean, you know, they're not making much forward progress. They keep coming back around where they started. Learn to set goals so that you have some priorities. Priorities, constant review. Make sure it's what you really want. Let it change. Do whatever it wants to change. Learn to separate majors and minors. Here's something that requires minor time. Here's something that requires major time. Is this all helpful? Wow. I'm excited about sharing.